Welcome. Today, we're going to talk about the horizontal bandsaw in Watertown High School's machine tool shop. Our horizontal bandsaw tends to be one of the workhorses of our facility here because for the most part, anything that we make in here gets cut from a piece of material on this saw. So we're going to talk about basic operation of this machine. We're going to talk about some safety concerns in regards to the machine as well as in regards to the operator today. Hopefully after this video, you have more confidence in using our horizontal bandsaw. The horizontal bandsaw, <clears throat> the saw itself can pivot up and down as you can see. So by pivoting it all the way up, it holds itself in position and we can get access now to the vise and putting our materials into the jaw as we need so that it's clamped properly when we're doing our cuts. We never want to have a piece of material that's just loosely laying down here when we're doing our cut. We want to make sure that we are clamping down on whatever it is that we're cutting so that part is not going to move. Nor should we ever be holding on to material by hand while we're making those cuts. The clamp should be doing that work for us so that it is safer and keeping our body and our hands away from the cutting edges, or in this case, the bandsaw blade. This particular saw is kind of an industrial saw for our shop, and it has a pretty heavy duty blade here. This blade is a little over one inch tall, it's got some good thickness to it, and it's fairly coarse in regards to a machine shop. A lot of times your saw blades, hacksaw blades, things like that, in a machine shop are very fine teeth. However, this one is very coarse, so it is going to be an aggressive cut, meaning it's going to cut pretty quick for the things that we're doing in here. So that brings up a couple of points that we need to make sure we're taking care of as we're making those cuts. And we're going to cover some of those in a moment. But first, I want to show how this thing works so that we can then backtrack and look at some of those safety pieces. So for now, I'm just going to cut off a little bit of the end of this aluminum one inch diameter piece. So we're going to hit start. We're going to notice some coolant is going to be coming out, a liquid. And we're going to nice and easy into the material. And we're going to let it start cutting. Now this is a good moment to talk about that coolant in there. The coolant that we see going through there is doing two things. One, it is cooling down the blade and the material because anytime we're doing a cutting action, we are creating friction and heat. And that heat is usually the enemy of what we're doing in a machining class. We don't want the blade to heat up, we don't want the part to heat up. So it's gonna cool it down. The other thing it's doing is clearing those cutaway chips out of the area so they're no longer building up in that saw cut. So the coolant is doing two things. This saw has an auto shut off, so when it gets to the bottom, it's actually gonna hit a switch right here, and it's gonna automatically kill the power to the saw, or kill, shut the saw off. So that's kinda nice, you don't have to worry about hit and stop. The part fell into the tray, which is fine. We're gonna lift that up. We're gonna look down for that piece. So clearly I have to clean this out a little bit. I can't even find the part I just cut. All right then. Uh, you would grab the piece that you cut off because usually that's the piece you want to keep. I cut a pretty small sliver there and then we can loosen up and pull our part out. So that's the basic operation. One of the things we've talked about is watching for that coolant on here to make sure that that coolant is on, which is gonna cool the part and remove the chips. One of the other things we have to be careful about when we're using the saw is the initial impact of the blade to the material. So when I'm on and I'm coming down to do my initial touch of that part, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. So when I'm coming down to do the initial touch, I want to make sure it's not a bang into that part. I want to come down nice and easy and let those teeth 
glide nice and easily into that material because it is the teeth here that are doing all of the work. So if those teeth start to break, that's where we start to have the failure of this saw blade. So we don't want to put any excess force on one tooth. And when you come down and bang into that material with it on, that's when we can easily break a tooth. So when we come into this, and again, I'm going to cut just a little bit off to save a material. So when we come in, I'm coming in nice and easy and letting it touch that material. I'm holding on to the saw as I start to make that cut as I go through. I'm also holding on to the saw handle through most of my cut just to make sure that it's not gonna bind up or anything like that. A brand new blade, this thing will cut like butter all the way through, no problems. But as we start to get to a used blade after a couple of months, you'll notice a couple teeth maybe have started chipping away and the blade might have a little hop to it. So by holding on to the saw, it's gonna create a better cut throughout that part. And there's the piece that we just cut off for demonstration. So one of the hardest things on the blade is the initial impact of the blade to the material. One of the other things that can be really hard on a blade is how we choose to cut a particular shape of material. So let's say we were cutting this piece of material right here. And it's just a flat stock of mild steel, but it's, you know, fairly thin in general. So if I'm putting this part in here vertically like this, we think about the idea of how many teeth are impacting that material at any one given time. If I zoom in there and take a look, it might only be one or two teeth that are in that material at once. So those, those teeth on that blade are working very hard, right? Whereas if I were to lay this material down, now as that blade comes across, we might have six, seven, 10 teeth that are touching that material at any one given time. And because of that, you're spreading the load out of how hard that blade has to work to cut through that material. So it's much easier on the blade when you can get more teeth into the material. So when you're cutting flat stock like this, we should hopefully be laying it down. Or if we are going vertical, we're going very slow through that material. So we have to think about how many teeth are in the material at a time. And that's another part that's really hard on that bandsaw blade. Sometimes you can't get around it. Let's say you're cutting some tube, whether it's round tube, let me zoom out. <clears throat> whether it's round tube or it's square tube, you're always gonna be in some thin material. So in these types of instances, you're just gonna take your time. Hold on to that saw, let it go slow, because if you let go, it's gonna rip through the sidewalls of that material and probably have a good chance of hurting or breaking some of those teeth on the bandsaw blade. We can cut tube all day long in this saw. It's designed to do it. I'm not saying you can't. We just have to take our time when we're cutting through tube so that we're not hurting the blade on those sidewalls. Now, some materials, like angle iron, if we were to be cutting that, right? If we lay it down like this, we got a good wall here, but this is vertical. So a lot of times, angle iron, you're gonna set it down like a V, so you got a little bit of teeth in each wall. So it'd be setting down like this, per se, and that blade is coming through nice and easy there. So that's one way to help that type of situation. All right, so let's go through the process of making a cut that we're trying to get to an actual size. So let's say we wanna cut something that is three inches long. We have this particular material here to do it. So we're gonna have it a little bit loose. We're gonna bring the saw down. And I usually just kinda of put my hip into it to keep it up above the material, but you can use a partner to hold it up too, just don't turn it on. I'm gonna put the ruler against the saw blade and slide my material out to three inches. 
Now, if the finished size of the part is three inches, we probably want to cut it longer than that, three and a quarter, three and a half, something like that, because you need to get rid of that rough cut material. However, I'm just saying for right now, for practice, we're cutting to three inches. So I have that set to three. I'm going to go ahead and lock down the handle for the vise so that part doesn't move. I'm now going to hold it up above the part again, turn it on, wait for the coolant to start coming out, and nice and easy I'm bringing it into the material. And once it's in, depending on what I'm doing, maybe I'm letting go of the saw, letting it do the work, or if there's a little bit of hop in the blade like there is right now, I'm going to hold on to the saw through the cut, and we're going to let it go. I'm not going to try to reach in there and grab that piece because my fingers then are getting close to that saw blade and that's not where I want my fingers to be. I'm going to see where that part went. The saw stops so I can lift it back up into the upright position, open up the vise, take my stock out, grab my good piece, and I would make sure I would put the excess away somewhere before I'm done. So. <clears throat> Hopefully in this short video, we have a better understanding of how to use the horizontal bandsaw. We understand some basic operation. We understand how to measure and cut apart to size. And we've talked a little bit about some safety concerns of keeping your body and hands away from the cutting surface, not holding on to the parts, the vise should be doing that for you. And to be careful on how that blade is contacting the material so that we can save the life of this expensive blade. This might look like a dirty machine, but I promise this is one of the workhorses of our shop and everything is almost getting touched in this shop that gets made and gets started right here. Good luck in your endeavors in our shop and hopefully this video has helped.